Thank you for sharing those wonderful and precious uh, memories that you have of your dad and your brother. Uh, God bless you. Uh, may it serve as uh, continual encouragement for you as you reflect back on your time with your dad and your brother. When I met Stephen earlier this week, uh, we got together and uh, talked about the program. He said to me, Chris, I, I want uh, today's service to be a celebration of uh, Dad's life, celebration of Sonny's life. I left that morning and I uh, reflected on the concept of celebration and death together. And I must admit that uh, initially I struggled a bit because, as you know, celebration and death don't naturally go together. It's like chalk and cheese, uh, complete opposites. Yet as I pondered more on this thought and reflected on the words of the scriptures, I understood that we can indeed celebrate, even in a service such as this. I like the word celebration, Stephen. Celebration implies that Sonny was loved. It implies that he had qualities, he had a character that touched people's lives. Celebration implies that he will be missed very much. But true celebration, in the real sense of the word, can only be experienced with genuine joy and happiness. And this is where I want to direct your thoughts this, this morning. Because I believe that it's appropriate and even possible for us to genuinely celebrate this in the spirit of joy and happiness, even in a time such as this. How is this possible? The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 22, Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice, and no, no one will take away your joy. Amen. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, the Lord says, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. I want you to notice here that Jesus is using the words grief and joy. Uh, and we all know that joy is not commonly associated with grief. In fact, to speak about joy in the midst of grief is socially unacceptable. And can even be considered as inconsiderate. Yet, in this past, Jesus speaks of grief and he speaks of rejoicing and joy in the very same sentence. Is Jesus being inconsiderate? To the greeting of his disciples, no, he wasn't. In fact, he is saying, now is your time of grief. In other words, go ahead, it's okay, grieve, cry, but know that there is hope upon the horizon. It is because of this hope, family and friends, this morning, that although we grieve the past in a way of something, we can still celebrate today. Because death is not the be all and more. End of story for Christians. It was because of this hope that one Christian writer puts death in its proper perspective. When she panned down, she wrote to Christians, death is a small matter. To Christians, death is a small matter. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus rose victoriously from the grave that early Sunday morning, and he turned. And he scornfully rebuked death and said, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? I am he who was dead, but now am alive forevermore. Yes, death is a small matter for Christians. Because Jesus Christ has conquered and overcome the strongholds and the clutches of the grave. And he promises that when he returns, he will do the same for all those who have died. With eager anticipation, to see the Lord again. On that day of Jubilee, the Bible says in Revelation, He will wipe every tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. This is why Paul says, Paul says, I don't want you to grieve like the rest of men, the rest of the world who has no hope. What a day to long for death. Uh, Reading family, children, and the rest of us all a day to long for. A day that the Bible describes a time and a day when families and friends will no longer gather together like this in grief. A day when we will no longer have tears, tearful eyes, if they were not a loved one. As we are this morning, 
Instead, the gathering that is future infiltrated by scripture is a gathering that will be permeated with joy and happiness. As loved ones separated from the cruel hand of death are reunited with their loved ones and families in the presence of God Almighty. Take heart and be of courage because the Bible describes death as sleeping. This is a comforting for friends and family because our sleeping is the most peaceful accident that we can do as humans. To lie down and take nap, unaware of the surrounding, no thoughts, sunny is resting, and his body, is no, his body no longer needs to bear the burden of sickness. He now rests peacefully, awaiting the coming of his Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the testimonies that help me realize and understand that Sunny was a man of God. I spoke earlier in the week with Auntie Bella and she shared with me that, uh, that Sunny was baptized and considered that in this church in the Love Island Samuel uh, by the president of the time, Francis Christian. So praise the Lord for a man who uh, had the faith in God was able to share that with his family the love uh, that Tony was able to share with us. May our prayer this morning be the prayer of the Apostle John. That he can and he wrote down in the final verse of Revelation, Come, Lord Jesus. May God bless you, men and children, family and friends. May the Spirit give you peace. May give you comfort and strength during this time of sadness. Uh, the final hymn for our service will be presented uh, by the Ryan Brothers. Thank you. 